Hi, hey everyone. Welcome to this one. This is a good one. One of my favorites. I've had her on the Primal Blueprint podcast. I also listen to her podcast, Manifest It Now, with another LOA coach we're having on the summit talking about money. Uh, her name is Cassie Parks. Today is Ginny Gain. She's also the author of The Champion Mindset, and she's a law of attraction coach. And just such positive vibes, such great things to say, offers so many free things to help you get started and also get in there in depth. And so welcome to helping us just kind of like want to rise up and empower the ladies out there. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me here, Al. I feel like we need to do a little dance party. Yeah. Dance. That's how we got on. We were like, yeah. Because yeah, like, hey. this is the first time we've seen each other actually through video yeah. versus true, talking. True. Last podcast was audio. You know, we'll, we'll start off with, I know your story a little bit and I, I love that you've kind of really naturally been doing this for a long time. Mm-hmm. Before I hit get me. into what, yeah, before I hit you with what I feel, you know, I want to hear about what you think on the topic of women's empowerment. Tell us how you got into understanding that you were responsible at, at the very minimum partially for creating your reality and mm-hmm. going down the road of law of attraction. Okay. Yeah, that is a long story. <laughs> but uh, summarizing, it's always been, I think I was really young when I was taught the power of our mind. Like, hey, you have the ability, even if you're using it in, um, my parents put me in this course when I was like nine years old. They're like, hey, if you want to get better grades, like, you know, practice like your memory and, and using like repetitive, your mind, use use it to visualize. And, you know, when you're playing sports and use it to, um in your relationships, if you want like to have fun, more fun with your friends kind of thing. So the idea, the concept was introduced to me really early that, hey, I'm the one that chooses. And just that idea that like, we always have a choice in our life. Like I'll always bring, I think we've talked about this before, but when my mom was like, you always have a choice. Like, and I'm like, I have to go to school. She's like, no, you don't. You can stay home and help me clean the house. And I'm like, okay, I'll go to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the more cool choice at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so from there, it was just a natural, like I was really, I was into athletics and then just wanting to be me. I don't know. It was always kind of in there, like this idea that like I get to choose what's for me. And then I was kind of in that lost phase of after uh, postgraduate and like traveling. And then it's like, what should I do with my life? And then I came across the law of attraction and it was one of a book called the power of your emotions by Abraham Hicks. And it was like, bam, I get it. And it was like, okay, this is the answer I've been looking for. This is how I can actually influence my reality and create what I really want. Like all my dreams, it's so easy. It's just like, and that's kind of how I fell into that path. And then I just started doing it and practicing it. And it was a natural evolution into one day. It was like, somebody said, Hey, you can get paid to do this. And I'm like, this can be my job. Like, this is amazing. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, to be able to do what you do and inspire people and have fun and also just also be teaching others the Mm -hmm. subtle craft work of some of this, some of this stuff. It's the best thing. Like I've all like, it's do what you love, like make your life about doing what you love. And Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, moving into, all right. So like obviously loaded question. There's a million things around the topic of just women's empowerment. Mm. Um, I guess I would ask what that means to you. And then maybe we can move on and you can share maybe times where, as a woman in this world, you weren't empowered mm-hmm. or, or or in a situation where someone was challenging and you had to empower yourself. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. We can get into all of that stuff because uh, I would, you know, we've all, every woman has had those moments, you know? I don't think yes. there's one that hasn't. So anyway, yeah. I'll let you. tell tell us what you think about that (laughs) cool so when I first like that's everything to me that's empowerment is this idea that we can we have the ability to create what we want and experience what we want and so I always say this thing it comes from Abraham Hicks like you can be do or have anything you desire and I think empowerment is the knowing of that like so the true belief in yourself that you can have what you want or you can create what you want you can get to where you want the idea that we can do it that's empowerment for me period what are some times where you felt like you really had to exercise being empowered um, where you were oh, I don't know. Empowered. All of Everybody. life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just being my gender. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> being my gender. Um, dating women. That's a big thing. And 
But was that was that an easy your parents sound very cool so uh was that an easy thing for you with your within your family um it, you know you'd think that and i thought it was going to be like that and hopefully they're not watching this <laughs> or maybe they are <laughs> but it that was happens. it was way more challenging than i thought it would be um but part of why i feel that was given to me like that path is this is being the example that like I freaking love who I am I love my life and it doesn't matter what comes in it's like when you own it and when you're empowered which comes from practice and and building that and the conscious choice and effort um you can live an amazing life like it doesn't like where wherever you come from whatever it is whatever is in front of you you have the same opportunity as everybody else maybe just not with as many tools or you know to get what you want like that's my biggest thing like everybody everybody has the same opportunity here to right. to because it all it starts in the head with that decision yeah you, um, I'm imagining that you must, as a woman who dates women, feel so empowered overall of the trajectory of your life to where we've ended up, Supreme Court decisions, right? <laughs> you know, things like that in, in our world that are changing. Um, it's always a little bit more difficult to navigate life when there's something that the world, when you're a minority of some kind or considered yeah. to be one, mm. you know what I mean? So, um, I'm sure there was probably a process for you on being able to fully accept yourself as that and be empowered in that totally. was, what was some of the potential? I mean, obviously anyone could imagine that a little bit of a struggle there. Um, but if you could talk a little bit more on that and that, you know, finally just having no shame about it to the point where you're obviously you're not in the closet. You're not, <laughs> I, you know, uh, you're not married to a man. Um, so, so clearly you've embraced it, but tell us about that journey to embracing that. Well, it's cool because even as you say that stuff, like that is the idea out there, like that, and I might offend some people when I say this, but that the minority, there has to be a struggle. And I'm like big in, in standing in the fact that we either, we individually make it a struggle or not. So it's a choice because no one outside of us can affect or control how we feel inside. It is always, always, always up to us. Always. And yes, it's a process to learn how to do that and to be able to do that easily. It's a lot, you know, we're, it's where we have natural responses to things, but you can get to the place where you are so certain in your inner world that the outside stuff doesn't make such a difference. You're not as affected by it. So when you say like, oh, there's all these things coming in from the government, like, and like, oh, you must be really proud of that or excited about that. I'm like, honestly, it doesn't matter. Like, yes, it, yes, right. it, it goes back to that. You're right. Yeah. It always goes back to that. It does matter. And I'm, I'm happy for that. But I just trust so much in that when each individual chooses to take responsibility for what's going on inside them, then, and makes their own happy inside, then the world outside is going to be a reflection of that. And there's so many different realities within our reality, like within our world. And so, yeah, I'm a big, and I really, I choose, I consciously choose not to define things as struggle. Like, yes, things, there's harder things than others. Obviously there's challenging situations and traumas and stuff, everything in our world, but look at it as how you choose to look at it is a big deal of how you experience it and what you create for your experience in the future. Right. Trauma yeah. or growth. You decide which, right. Right. The, or, right. Or not that it's between those two, but, and yeah. interesting you said that. So I feel, you know, from my point of view, like, yeah, I love it when those things happen in the world, but you're right. Here's the thing. No Supreme court decision is going to make some child who has discovered right. that they love other boys right. an easier path. Right. Right. Just yeah. because they're, but to still overall for me, you know, uh, I, and I'm, and I'm straight, but for me, I love that progression. I love whether that's gone in terms of just like the openness of, of, of you being able, of more people being able to yeah. embrace it than they once did before. So hopefully it will open that up. But like you said, it is all right here. So it doesn't matter. It's, yeah. We could, you could do statistical analysis or maybe the same number of people that suffer for years with <laughs> owning themselves. So like it just, it wouldn't matter. Um, it was cool though. Like I will, you mentioned like the path of really being empowered. Like it took years to be able to fully own that as, cause I'm like, Oh, maybe I should try this. Maybe I should try this. <laughs> and it was, 
that path as who is made me who I am. But there was a point where I was like, the standing in your truth, like really like owning it. And I think that's a big part of empowerment, whatever area it's in, whether it's like, I love that I am an extrovert. I love that I love to talk about bowling all the time. What if you're like, it doesn't matter what it is. It's just owning it and standing in your truth. And that gives you that essence and that feeling of, of empowerment. Yeah. What are, what are some things where you've experienced in a friend or, or a coaching client mm -hmm. um, or in yourself where you went from A to Z on one level of being feeling disempowered about any kind of thing or insecure about something, right? Or yeah. we can, you, we can interchange those words to going to really making a leap. Um, I mean, there's got to have been some benchmarks, right, of some things in your life uh, where you're like, oh, you know, I used to, mm, and then I moved through that, walked through that door, you know? Mm. Sometimes it's such a gradual process. I'll use an example with one of my clients. I was actually speaking with her this morning and she, I remember one of the first things she said to me, like when we started working together was, I, you know, I never noticed how much I <laughs> um, base my feelings off of what's happening around me, like the other people in my life. She's like, I watch my kids play and I'm happy. And then my husband comes home from work and he's upset and then I'm sad. <laughs> and then this goes well and I'm happy. And my mom's mad at me and then I get up, I get angry. And then, so it was like that observation. So that's where you start, like realizing like, hey, am I the one really in control of how I feel? Um, and then with that realization, we sometimes get to that insecure place. We're like, oh crap, like who am I then kind of idea. And that is like, I think the basis for starting to build your own empowerment. So the transition for her was, you know, ask, even asking that question of, well, well, what am I, what do I want? And then feeling like, do I really think I can have it? And a lot of people don't, right? A lot of people it's, why would I not maybe deserve it? But sometimes it's like, why would I even deserve to have that dream life or that things I, that I really want? Why do I deserve that vacation? Or so that's the kind of the disempowering side. And then, so when I work with people, it's a lot of changing the beliefs of going from that place to as soon as you start to dream, as soon as you start to give yourself permission to ask for what you want, that's like a whole new world. <laughs> and then it's building the belief that it's actually possible. And I mean, there's so many ways and so many pathways, but yeah. So through those, the, through the training, the mind, the mindset, the thought patterns, that language that you're using inside your head, that's the transition. That's how you go from disempowerment and not believing you can have it to, Hey, I can actually make this happen. Hey, it's happening. Hey, I'm empowered. I can have whatever I want. So does that answer your question? Yeah. And I like how you use the example of the person that was always looking out. You saw that the person was looking outside of themselves mm -hmm. for how they were feeling, right? Mm -hmm. The husband came home or whatever and they were crazy. And then they, you know, and it's affected by outward things. And <laughs> so, you know, one of the things about being empowered is <clears throat> there's anyone can perform confidence, a lot of people can perform confidence and perform security. Yes. But it will always, always sneak out. <laughs> it will always sneak out because it's not true. You have to be really secure in yourself. And it's not to say that truly secure people don't have moments. In exactly. Little, but, but, but you have to have an overall inner core yes. of feeling secure in this world. Otherwise, you fall into the people pleasing performing trap and then you know you're bsing that game <laughs> and so you're gonna run into people that you won't be able to connect with ultimately because they'll find that like it, it has to come here totally. it can only come here because you could even be the person that owns a multi-million dollar company and is super like the funniest, wittiest guy at the party and um, really smart and, you know, everyone loves, but, but that's not true inner empowerment, self-worth. And I, I know it's branching off, but it's all under that yeah. umbrella of empowerment. So I want to, and, and I, look, it took me a while, probably. I mean, I was always pretty confident, had self-esteem yeah. as a kid. You go in and out of waves, teenage years, yeah. love heartbreaks, man, shit goes to <laughs> 
you know, at whatever, like the year, the six months I did Coke in high school, whatever, like just some awful, like, and, but at the end of the day, like I, I, I'm, I feel so secure. It's the, it's literally like when I, there are people that I know who have so much, maybe more materially or the next level where you want to be, there's always someone the next level. Even if you're a billionaire, you want to be right. So you're a millionaire, you want to be, so even there's always something to strive for that I wouldn't want to be them. And I mean them, I mean them. Right. Oh, trust me. I get lots of the, I have everything I need now. Help me find myself. <laughs> right. Yes. You know, you know, it's funny you said that because that's a common theme of coaches of what they say about people. They're like, all right, well, you help me go out and get the money and the job and all the stuff. And now I'm back to find happiness. Yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and yeah. you're like, it's right here. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you know what? It's, it's really awesome too. I I've noticed cause, and you are this way too, probably. I, but I am a person who is really se- secure mm-hmm. and people are drawn to that. And here's why, because secure people are usually the most authentic with their words and actions and you know what you're getting yes. and you can count on it and you can trust that. Mm-hmm. And people connect with that. A uh, kids connect with me, like mm-hmm. random, you know, I think it's an energy of it's being real. It's being real. Yes. Right. So let's talk about that because listen, I want, there's so much you said. I want so much. Yeah. It. So let's get it. Because one of the things is like, I am an alpha female, obviously. So are you in a lot of ways? Um, and so, yes, I mean, you know, Here's the funny thing though. I don't do all this for attention. Like I'm not like, I can't wait to go video myself. <laughs> oh, you I didn't really, say that? I totally yeah. said that. <laughs> I totally said that. And um, in fact, if anything, it's more awkward. I, I, ha- I have no shame being here right now in front of the camera. Just like, yeah. okay, we're talking. Um, but I, yeah, I feel like it's anyway, interesting. I want you to get into that because I feel often people are drawn to me either because they need themselves, they need, to come up against the wall of performance and realize, mm-hmm. oh shit, uh, I'm not real. There's a real person. Or they're drawn to me in a lot of ways because they want that. They want to speak up more. They want to be more mm-hmm. um, confident. And it's more of the, the latter, like more people I feel I've drawn into my life who need a little bit of help with confidence. And you know, I then learn whatever from them, right? And right. vice versa. But I've noticed that theme. And Sometimes you can act as if, but again, that only gets you so far. If you're already here and a genuine and you're true and you're real, even if it's not confident real, you can get there. But if you're not real here, you got to do a lot of work before you try to confidence it out. Yeah. Before you up level. Shoot. Yeah. There's up level. A- <laughs> So there's so much goodness and there's, I love this idea of there's what's on the surface and then there's what's underneath. Like there's these different levels, there's superficial and you totally can have that outward confidence, you that show up confidence and then be like inside be cowering. Like I remember growing up, people are like, you're so secure, you're so confident. And, And I was on a lot of levels, but that just keeps growing and keeps getting more and more and more. Um, the more I step into my truth and that, so this is why I wanted to bring in, you have your kind of external perception and your internal, what's really going on. And the more in alignment those are, that's your authenticity. That's your empowerment. That's where you're going to have all the goodness come into your life. Um, And that's when you, when you are, see if this makes sense. We're all kind of, there's a, I talk to a lot of people that are like, I feel like there's something out there, something else. I feel like there's a bigger purpose for me here. There's something calling me. I don't know what it is. And it's that inner part of you that's calling you your external part to align. So what is your life aligning with what's inside? Is your life aligning with your true values, what you really find important? And that's why my whole company is called Live Your Truth. That's like, are you living in alignment with what's important for you? And are you being your authentic self and expressing that and your gifts to the world? And that is where you get this feeling, this incredible feeling of empowerment and alignment. And that's what's been coming. That's what's come through in the past years of building this business and being a coach is even on more and more levels. But every time, would you say this is true for you? Every time you do more of what you love, you feel empowered? Uh, which is, of course, like hands down. <laughs> 100%. And by the way, it begets more of those things. And then honestly, I love everything that I do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love know. it. 
I totally get it. But here's the thing too. Like that's the thing though, is that again, the happiness. Yeah. It it's here. It's not out there. And did you find it inside first? Yeah, because you know what? I think there is something like you mentioned, it's naturally on the progression of being one's authentic self when you are pursuing inner desires and dreams, no matter what they are, painter, writer, garbage man, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want to do that you love to do that, because again, you're pursuing something that you love that would make you happy. It could be writing. It could be any of these things, podcasting, right? So uh, yeah, I mean, I feel that clearly I was already empowered to step into that. And then that begot more of that. Yes. Um, of course. I I love it. I love it. I love it. (laughs) And so part of like how the law of attraction plays into this, when you were saying, Hey, these people are attracted to me. It's because when you're being your authentic self and you're in alignment, you are, you're really high vibes that you're doing things you love. You're in the flow, you're open, you're allowing, and you're receiving. And people are attracted to high vibing people. It's normal. And they're either going to be offended by you because it's uncomfortable for them because they don't hang out in that, in that place, or they're going to be drawn to it because they're open to it and they're ready for more. And so we totally attract, I'm a big believer, obviously, that everyone that comes into our experience is on some level, we're attracting that experience in for whatever reason. And I love that you said it's a co-creation. So like you take something from them, you give something to them. It's like back and forth. That is always, I say that with all my clients. I'm like, I feel lucky to be coaching you. (laughs) Yeah, no. And you know, it's funny. My my coach has said that to me for years sometimes. I mean, but it is because they're also having fun. That's what they love to do. That's what you love to do too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, it's a really interesting thing. I, where can, you know, where do we start when we have 15 minutes left? I mean, we can't go for three hours. We could, could. but if someone is, here's the thing, Mm -hmm. if you're out there and you are not authentic or maybe too posturing or to act as if on the surface, Okay. And you're not not feeling that connection with like, you're not right. And you, and you know who, right? Like if you're that person, you'll, you'll understand that. How does that person start to move into uh, loving oneself and gaining the self love and the self worth, regardless of what their past is, what their parents were, what's around them. Where's the train to start so that I can head in the direction of like, I do want to be confident, right? I do want to be secure in myself, damn. And I want to be one of those people that people, you know, people want that and they see it in others and they, they, they just feel like they have to play a part and that they can't truly be it. Mm, that happens how, yeah, like how does one start to become okay with themselves right i mean it, this, this is a that's a fourteen thousand prong answer it, it is such like, give a us your best shot <laughs> well there's so many things i want to say but like do it, do it. the first is just like take a breath and and acknowledge that it's okay to be where you are so you're not at the like you're in the middle of your journey. You are evolving. You're, right. if, if we have to, this is, comes from the Buddhist teachings, I believe. Like if you look at what's happening in front of you, if you look at this moment and you judge it as wrong, you're, that's the only thing that creates in happy, um, not happy in you. I don't even know how to say having a struggle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Suffering. Yeah. Suffering. Yes. And so you either look at your mo- the moment in front of you, what's real in front of you, and you say, yes, it's okay, or you say, no, it's not okay. And one is going to lead to more peace, and one is going to lead to more struggle. And when you're using the law of attraction terminology, one is allowing, and it's going to bring you more into that place, everything you want, and one is resistance, and that's going to be pushing against things, and it's going to bring you more of what you don't want. So that's the first thing is I would find a way, decide, choose to make peace with what is and the where you are and what you, what's happening right now in your life. Just continue to say to yourself, like, it's okay. It's okay. It has to be okay because I'm here right now and I can't change right now, right now. So it's okay. And from that place, that's ultimately the only thing you need to do because then the law of attraction responds to that feeling of relief. If you're just saying it and it's, it's not sinking, the important thing is that you feel it, that you feel some element of relief of like, okay, I don't have to figure this out right now. 
the law of attraction responds to that feeling and will bring you something else that's along that same vibrational frequency. So it'll bring you something else that feels like relief. And so continue to do that. <laughs> this, and this is still a, this is still things I practice all the time. If I get into a challenging situation, I have to look at it and consciously say, Hey, okay, this is okay. You're in the middle of evolving and give yourself a break and wherever you are, it never ends. We never get to the end of our journey until we die. And then well, my belief, we go on somewhere else. And so if this idea that we have to accomplish something or get somewhere that we're not where we should be, that causes so much of our like inner, I don't, I'm, I'm not empowered. Right. So if the, if we start to just acknowledge that it's okay to be where I am and it's okay that I'm, that I'm growing, that I'm learning and then say, Hey, I'm here watching this. Something's coming from this. I'm being called somewhere right. and, and, and start to notice. And this is a big thing that changes a lot of things is you, is you switch your focus from everything that's going bad to everything that's going great. And it's like the smallest thing and it no, will make I'd love to jump in there. <laughs> yeah, no, I want to jump in there because I love the, um, when in reaching for better feeling thoughts, it can be as simple as you've just pulled onto the freeway and all of a sudden it's jammed. And your first thought, <laughs> your first old you thought yeah, is, I love it. <laughs> damn it. Like I'm going to be late or <laughs> F I'm going to be late. Right. Mm -hmm. But then when you kind of get into this more and more, you immediately go right to a second thought, which is, or you know what, maybe I'm like alive because of this and I mix, missed it. Maybe I had a mercy here. Do that all you know, maybe, the time. Maybe I should be so, and you know what? Because it happened to me once. Oh. I couldn't get on a freeway for three, in the middle of the night and I was in Newport Beach where I didn't know very well and I was going home and I was a little like, uh, and the iPhone GPS wasn't as great that back then, like, you know, years ago. And I kept, I couldn't get on this freeway. And then finally what I got on, I realized and the timing of what the scene mm. looked like, it was... I had like a, oh my God. Oh and my because God. Because I knew a new law of attraction, I had that moment of like, you know what? Never again. Because yeah. you never know. Like, yeah. I didn't want to get on that damn freeway. I'm glad yeah. I was frustrated by that. Like, I'm glad I was blocked totally. um, from getting on that freeway. That could have been me. So you never know. Which is the better thought? I'm going to be late. Damn it, this sucks. Or, you know what? Maybe my life was just safe. Oh my God, I'm so lucky to be alive. Thanks. <laughs> right? And the different feelings that go with that. Right. I, I was yeah. speaking to a client yesterday and she said, this happens a lot too, is like I got, um, I was supposed to catch this flight and I got sick and I missed my flight. And she's like, but since I was working with you, I, I used it. And, and she's like, and it turned out to be the best thing ever for this, which she got all this money, extra money came in. She had appointments. She had think the flight, was, she got a better flight. Like everything worked out better. She's like, I just, and so I, I let it be okay. She's like, I didn't even care that I was sick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's one of those things where, you know, something negative happens and you might want to go right to the leg. All right. This is going to be good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, and you can expect it too. Like, all right, I'm a little peeled on this one, but it's going to be good. <laughs> and that's awesome. That's a really yeah. good point because it's like, you can kind of have fun with it. Cause you can kind of be like, okay, universe, like, what are you up to this time? Like, okay, this, this really wasn't how I planned it, but yeah. I know, you, you know, I know. My things... expectations, this yeah. is not what I wrote down and switching gears. Yeah. And then you realize later, and that's when as well, the more you play this wonderful game of life, you uh, become more skilled in kind of having, in, in having faith. So that, and then that faith breeds less reactive reactions to yeah. negative things mm -hmm. because over time you get, have more faith. So then you can go, all right, I did just cry, but this is going to be good because this, this is bad. So, you know, it's going to be like, and because you know that something great is going to come from the pain that you're feeling, that there's something on the other side. Yeah. People who go down into the whole depression, they don't know that. They don't feel that. So that's the practice is you want to get into that. Because like you said, going back to the beginning, it's how we decide to feel and think about a thing. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Going back to uh, same-sex relationships and, and, and that it doesn't matter how many rights you have or whatever, right? Yeah. Also, too, it doesn't matter how rights you have. You still may be walking down the street in California, in West Hollywood, and right. get called a, a, a slur. So right. you don't know, right? Like, it's not like you're safeguarded. So it's, mm -hmm. it's really what's within here and being okay with oneself in the world. Um, 
back to you on the topic of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we were, we were you were just saying the, oh, I was going to say something. That slipped my head. But yeah, um, I wanted to mention that these beliefs, oh, that it's a journey that like one of the best things that we can do for ourselves is to be kind to, to yourself along the way. So all of these skills, you just get better. And I call them skills. They're like life skills, <laughs> learning to be yeah. kind to yourself and learning to pay attention to that dialogue that's going on in your head. That's the biggest thing is if you would just like, be kind to yourself up there it would make a huge difference in your life and and the biggest thing i see is just chill out like just relax like life is good like life is working out and the moment we things come in and we react and we judge right away we're making it hard for ourselves we're always the only ones that ever get in our own way but so learning to just this is a cheesy saying and it doesn't always you can't always apply it, but go with the flow. Like literally just get out of the way and let life take you because life has like a really good plan for you is what I believe. <laughs> well, and let's talk about, cause people can really access your wealth of knowledge and, and a lot of your coaching for free by listening to your podcast. Everything is on the podcast. <laughs> Manifest it now, right? Is yeah. the podcast you can find it on iTunes and elsewhere. Tell us also the champion mindset. Let's talk a little bit about that. Give us um, a best-selling book on Amazon. Yeah. Um, all about, again, right? Getting into this stuff. Mm -hmm. So who's that book right for? It's for someone who's just learning about the law of attraction. So the biggest feedback I get from that is, wow, I get it now. So a lot of people will read books and they'll, or they'll listen to Abraham Hicks or they'll watch The Secret and they'll be like, okay, like I kind of get it. But then they read The Champion Mindset and they're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. This is like applicable and I see how this applies in real life now. Because there's situations in there, like you talk about relationships, you talk about job, you talk about, you know, and how it's showing up, just like we're talking about today, like getting on the freeway or going to getting on a flight, whatever. So, yeah. Excellent. And then how do you work with people? How can people get more from you? Do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching? What do, do you, what do you offer in this way? Tell us, cause I know people would be excited. <laughs> Uh, so I have LOA skills camp. So it's a group course and that we work together for eight weeks. And that's where most people start with me. I do have from some private clients, none right now, but there's, you know, every once in a while, there's spots that open up for that. Um, but the best place is the LOA skills camp and you get the community as well. And so you get me for sure. Um, you get that live feedback and then you have that group supporting you. Uh, moving you through and seeing how it's working in your life. So that's where kind of the most uh, significant transformations happen in people's lives. Excellent. And Everyone, <laughs> it is so much fun. Uh, what's up next? What's exciting? I've been watching your Instagram lately. By the time this will come out, it'll be months later. Um, but as far as, uh, aside from all your awesome travels, any another book in the works? What, what, what's going on? Oh, you're, Al, doing you live, know. you're doing some live podcasts or you some live events with Cassie. Yeah. You? We have an event coming up uh, in Toronto and then in LA. Um, but seriously, travel is the best part, like living this life and being on the West coast, then the East coast, then I'm going to be down South. Then I feel like Hawaii is in the mix somewhere. Malibu. Yeah, yeah like exactly. Malibu. I know. Yeah. That's why I love all your pictures. I'm like, yes, beach. <laughs> you know, we might be able to pull another, double of that Cassie situation this summer in Malibu. Yes. That, yeah. Have Let's a, do it. Maybe there might be, there might be an opportunity for some Malibu. Bring our surfboards. Malibu hangout. Yeah. We'll take you to the surf rider, the famous yeah. surf spot. Um, <laughs> Ginny Gain. So ginnygain.com, G-I-N-N-Y, G-A-N-E.com. And also the champion mindset on Amazon, Books A Million, so many other places. Thank you so much. And let us know, you have um, something for everyone, right? We can go to your website and do a download. Yes. Can you tell us about that? So people don't need to read your book in order to kind of get started with understanding this. Tell us how, what that's about. Absolutely. Okay. So getting into that better feeling place is all about alignment. And so I put together this plan. So things you can actually do, because that's the biggest thing. People are like, I don't know what to do. How do I apply this? So it's an action plan and you can grab it at LOAactionplan.com 
or go to my website and then you get in a little accountability calendar with that too. So you can like keep track of like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing all these things. I'm being successful. Hey, I'm building the belief in myself. Hey, I do feel more empowered that I can have what I want. That's so awesome. Thank you yeah. so much for your oh, time. Thank so you so to much. You. And we will, we will chat soon. Awesome.